Could it be your spouse? Could it be friendships? Could it be your job? And then you also have to ask yourself a touch, tough question. This part you can say, ouch. Is there something in your life that might not be pleasing to God? Is there something in your life that might be disapproving to the Lord? I mean, you got to ask those questions sometimes. So life has thrown Hannah a lemon, and she was bitter about it. You, can, you know she's bitter about it because in 1 Samuel 1 and 10 it states, And she was a bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. It was something that saddened her. It was something that she lived with daily, the pain of not having a child. And she had to live with this pain year after year after year. So we all know it's one thing when life throws you lemons. But it's another thing when God sends you, I'm not God, because it's not God, so when life throws you an agitator or a hater, or somebody that <laughs> likes to squeeze those lemons and make sure you get all the bitterness out. You <laughs> see, Hannah had a hater. <laughs> Uh, like I said, El Elkanai was not only married to Hannah, he was also married to, uh, practice this word, to Penina. Yeah. And she had children. So Penina knew that Elkanai held Hannah at a higher regard. If you read in 1 Samuel 5 and 10, it says, But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. Although, although the Lord had closed her womb, and her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her room. So it was year by year when she went to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. You see, sometimes life throws you a lemon, and then you'll have somebody who enjoys squeezing the lemon to make sure all the bitterness is out of it. Sometimes you don't always just have a hater. Sometimes you just have a problem with looking at somebody else's life or looking at somebody else's story. Like somebody getting that promotion you thought you should have got on the job. Mm -hmm. Somebody getting that new home or car that you thought you should have been driving in. I mean, sometimes you don't have a physical hater, but you create it in your mind by looking at other people's circumstances. So I think, you know, I know for a fact I've been there probably. I'm like, she got promoted and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we all, everybody can agree. Okay, we've all been there. <laughs> Maybe you're here today and you find yourself with a problem you can't alter. And to put the icing on the cake, you, sur you, found you put the icing on the cake, you are surrounded by people you cannot avoid. So what should you do? I think you should follow Hannah. When life threw her lemons, she made lemonade. Hannah decided to turn to the Lord, talk with the Lord, and trusted the Lord. She went to the Lord in prayer. She prayed openly, with commitment, and fervently. In 1 Samuel 1 and 10, it states, And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed to the Lord, and wept in anguish. You see, in between that bitterness and the weeping, it says she prayed to the Lord. Hannah decided to pray. She didn't wait till she was alone to pray, but right in front of everyone. She prayed to the Lord so intense that she began to start weeping. Hannah was not trying to keep her limit concealed. She was trying to keep it, I mean, she was trying to make it revealed. Hannah didn't care who saw her or heard her. She wanted to make sure that God heard her prayer and cried, so she did it openly. So as we can see, Hannah prayed openly. But not only did she pray openly, she prayed with commitment. The word commit means to make a promise to God. So 1 Samuel 1 and 11, it states, Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the afflictions of your maidservants and remind me, and not forget your maidservants, but will give your maidservants a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. You see, Hannah wanted to make a vow to the Lord, or a promise to let God know, if you bless me with this child, I'll make sure he's separate from the world. He wanted to make sure that this child was consecrated to the Lord. So she made sure that when she was praying in a way that was with commitment. So Hannah prayed openly. She prayed with commitment, but she also prayed fervently. So let's first deal with that word fervent. I brought my book. I love this book. It's called Fervent, A Woman's Battle Plan for Serious, Specific, and Strategic Prayer. 
In the book, it defines fervent as a hands-on, kneels-down, never-give-up action guide to practical, purposeful praying. You see, Hannah was a fervent prayer. Pray. She fervently prayed. In 1 Samuel 1, 12 and 15, it states, And it happened, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? But your wine, put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunken neither wine nor intoxic intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken unto now. You see, there's a word in verse 12, and it was the word continue. You see, she didn't pray once, quietly. Dear God, please just help me, heal me. <laughs> no, Hannah said, you need to hear this prayer. <laughs> so she played, her prayers were multiplied, increased, and intensified. Every time it got louder, it got more passion in it because she wanted God to know that she had a request made before him. In verse 15, it says she poured out her soul to the Lord, meaning Hannah shed, drained, and emptied her tears in God's presence. She was praying so hard that Eli thought she was drunk. She had to let him know, I'm not drunk. I'm just a woman pouring my soul out to the Lord. You see, Hannah was facing a problem she couldn't alter, a person she couldn't avoid, a prayer she couldn't answer, so she took her limit to God. She prayed openly, with commitment, and fervently. So what do you do when life gives you limits? When that job lets you go? When maybe you have that miscarriage? When your bills outweigh your income? When your kids aren't acting right? You have to stop thinking you can do it alone. That just sinks you into depression and a downward spiral. You need to get like Hannah. I don't care what's going on around me. You need to pray openly with commitment and fervently because you want your God to show up and show out like never before for your limits in your life. What things can you, what things can you start committing to the Lord? I mean, how many times have we said, Lord, if you give me that next job, but... I mean, it might cost me going to church. It might cost me serving. It might cost me doing this. Lord, give me an increase in my finances. But, oh, I might have to stop paying my tithes and offering. I mean, you have to come to God with some commitment, some promises, when you're trying to get that limit out of your life. Because Hannah understood God, because Hannah understood this, God blessed her with the desires of her hearts. He turned her lemons into lemonade. Hannah received her reward. In 1 Samuel 1, 19 and 20, it states, Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to the, their house of Ramon. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. You see, Hannah gives us the blueprint on how to handle the lemons in our life. So I just brought an example. Give me one second. You see, to make lemonade, you only need three simple ingredients. I mean, of course, if you want to add spice to it, you can. <laughs> but we're for this example, but it's only three basic ingredients to make lemonade. So the first ingredient is lemons. The actual funny part is we always dread lemons, well, lemons in our life, but you actually need the lemons to make the lemonade. In order to have a good lemonade, you need these. It gives you the opportunity to reach other people for Jesus. It helps other people understand how you got over and dealt with adversity. It allows us to be able to reach out to other people and also to see that God is strong and to see his strength in, others, in certain situations. So you need to first add the lemons. 
appreciate the lemon juice, but we don't like them. But they're needed to make the lemonade. The next ingredient is sugar. You see, sugar is sweet. It takes something that was once bitter and makes it taste pleasant or sweet. You see, when life gives us lemons, we need to counteract that bitterness. And you do that with something sweet, like sugar. So what is the sugar signifying for us? Jesus. Prayer <laughs> and praise and worship. We're going to get to Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. I should have brought you to my prayer. But sugar is prayer and praise and worship. You know, that sounds good to God's ear. When you hear you good this job, child coming to him with the issue you have, get the sugar in there. tribulation and what he says about your limits in your life. And you know how you do that? By opening up your book and seeing the promises he's made to you. And, I mean, I found so many verses. I 